One of the most frequent questions I receive from doctors from overseas is, how do I get into residency training in Australia? So in this video, I'm gonna answer all the key questions that you may have about the process of becoming a specialist doctor in Australia. Hello YouTube, I'm Dr. Anthony Llewellyn, the career doctor. I make videos to help you better manage your career process. If you're looking for a bit of extra help, then check out my website where we have a couple of really great courses, including the really popular job interview skills course. Link in description below. So becoming a specialist doctor is generally a very rewarding pathway, which can afford a lot of independence and financial stability, and is probably the ultimate aim of most doctors in Australia. So I've put this vlog together as an overview of how this all works for you. What I'm going to do first is outline the basic process of how doctors become a specialist in Australia, including how both local graduates enter into training as well as how overseas graduates can as well. Then at the end, I will answer a bunch of related questions. At the start, I wanted to make three key points. Number one, the process of becoming a specialist doctor in Australia is termed specialty training, and in most cases is conducted by one of the 16 specialist medical colleges. Two, residency training, which is often what doctors from places such as North American and Asian countries refer to when they are talking about specialty training, does not exist as a concept in Australia. And in fact, being a resident medical officer means something quite different here. Three, there are around 64 different medical specialties to choose from in Australia, and this includes general practice, which is recognised as a specialty in its own right. So how and when do local graduates enter into specialty training? Well, medical school has been rapidly evolving in Australia of late, with the majority of schools phasing out the old MBBS programs in favour of four or five year MDs. Some of these programs are graduate programs, so it's not surprising to hear that for some, the process of choosing and targeting a particular specialty begins very early in medical school. However, unlike say the North American system, you can't simply just apply for specialty training at the end of your medical school program. Upon graduating, there is a requirement for a minimum of one year supervised training, which is referred to as an internship. It's only after you satisfactorily complete your internship that you can gain general registration. Doctors from the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland would be familiar with something similar. The Australian medical training system has largely been adapted from the UK system. Now the internship period is heavily supervised and there are formal training and assessment processes with oversight provided by bodies in each state and territory called pre-vocational medical councils. This pre-vocational period often extends for at least another year and we call it pre-vocational training. So resident means something different in Australia. A resident or resident medical officer or RMO in Australia is a doctor in their second year out of medical school, i.e. someone who has completed their internship. Whilst it is technically possible to enter into some specialty training programs as a resident, psychiatry and general practice being examples, generally most doctors wait until the end of their second year to enter into specialty training. And in the case of some particularly competitive specialties such as surgery specialties and anesthesia, they may have to wait several more years to get onto a scheme. A doctor who is still a resident in their third year is generally referred to as a senior resident or senior resident medical officer or SRMO. For most senior RMOs, there is no set standard or oversight for their training, so the quality of support provided can vary quite considerably, and it can often be left up to the individual to develop their own program. This situation has unfortunately led to some fairly famous recent cases of exploitation of doctors working what are termed unaccredited posts. These are posts that are not oversighted as official training posts by a college, so they're often also referred to as service roles. It's for this reason that doctors in Australia are often relieved when they finally make it into a specialty. For international medical graduates coming via the standard pathway, or in some cases also the competent authority pathway, it's a resident post that you are looking to fill as your first job in medicine in Australia, i.e. a pre-specialty training position. Key requirements for specialty training. The requirements for entry into specialty training differ between colleges, and this video is not intended to address each one specifically, but let's look at some of the general requirements. You must have general registration to enter specialty training. One thing that every doctor must have to enter into specialty training in Australia is general registration. So 
For local graduates, this means completing an internship first. For RMGs, this means completing a provisional year, normally as a resident, either via the standard pathway or competent authority pathway, after which you will also be granted general registration. This is why I often tell IMG candidates that once you have completed your supervised year, you are almost on an equal footing with local graduates. You generally need at least two years experience. Now most, but not all colleges require you to have gained a minimum amount of clinical experience prior to applying. The most common requirement is for two years. Whether this is a valid requirement or not is somewhat questionable. As noted, some colleges now allow doctors to apply after completing an internship. A key driver for maintaining a second year residency in Australia is the need for doctors to fill service level roles. But to be fair, many doctors themselves also value having two years to consolidate after medical school. Having permanent residency or citizenship can also be a requirement. In some cases, for example, the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons, you will also need to prove that you are a citizen or a permanent resident to apply. So this can be a barrier against IMG doctors. I'm often asked why there is this discrimination in place. To be fair to the colleges, they are really only just applying the Australian law, which essentially dictates that jobs must be provided to citizens and residents first before being offered to anyone on a visa. Many other countries have similar arrangements for their own citizens. The application process itself. Now the application process itself is similar to a normal job recruitment process. There are two main ways to get selected into specialty training in Australia. Number one, the college goes first. The first way is to get selected by the college first. This is the approach that most colleges adopt. Examples would include RACS, the College of Ophthalmology, College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and the College of Psychiatry. For trainee doctors, this selection process may be the most rigorous job interview that they ever encounter, with many colleges employing scoring criteria for both your CV as well as your referees, and submitting candidates to psychometric testing and a multiple mini interview approach. There is often a fee of several thousand dollars to apply with, no refund if you don't make it. After the college has selected which candidates it prefers for training, the employers, the hospitals, may invoke their own second selection process or just accept the findings of the college. Number two, the employer goes first and normally alone. If you're applying for, say, physician training or radiology training, then you will start off by interviewing for a training post which is held by a hospital or health service. This would generally be a more standard affair with an online application, CV and referee checks and interviews. Normally it's just a panel interview, but there has been a trend lately to making some of these recruitments multiple mini interviews as well. There will generally be representatives of the respective college on the selection panel, and once you have gained a post, you will then apply to be recognised as a trainee by the relevant college. In the case of physicians, you may even do this beforehand. The process is generally just an application and fee, and rarely are doctors rejected at this point. General practice selection. General practice selection is a whole beast to itself with many different pathways into training. The main pathway into GP training is conducted by the regional training providers which are separate from the GP colleges. Selection is quite rigorous and also involves both psychometric testing as well as formal interviewing. Once selected, candidates then apply for one or both other college training programs for which they have already been deemed eligible by passing the training selection process. What specialties can you apply for? Well, if we take the latest view from the Medical Board of Australia, there are 64 recognised specialties for medicine in Australia. And below that, many hospitals and employers will recognise even more subspecialties. Now that seems a lot of choices, but actually the initial choice is made a little bit easier by virtue of the fact that many specialties break their training up into basic and advanced training. Basic training is usually around two or three years and more generalised. Once you complete basic training, you can specialise further in advanced training, which usually requires you to undertake an additional selection step. Let's look at some of the more popular specialty choices in Australia. For general practice, as indicated, there are a number of pathways, but the main pathway is the Australian General Practice Training Program, under which you train for a fellowship with either the Royal Australian, the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners or Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine. For both adult medicine and paediatrics, you commence basic training with the Royal Australasian College of Physicians, after which you can choose to stay general in your advanced training or do one of many different specialties. The RACP also looks after some other smaller training programs 
including occupational health and rehabilitation medicine. For radiology, you apply to the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Radiology. This is a relatively straightforward specialty. There are really only two options, diagnostic radiology and radiotherapy. For psychiatry, you apply to the Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Psychiatrists. For emergency medicine, it's the Australasian College for Emergency Medicine. Surgery is a little different because it's such a competitive specialty. Trainees have generally completed a lot of experience and courses just to get in. So then you apply directly for what's called SET, surgical education training, in either of general, vascular, orthopedics, ear, nose and throat, paediatrics, cardiothoracic, neurosurgery, urology or plastic surgery. We have a more detailed post about the specialty colleges on my website. Other related questions. So first question, how long does specialty training run for? Well, the answer is most training programs are around five or six years minimum, although general practice can be as little as three years. Question, do you get paid when training? Well, it's surprising how often this question is asked, and I guess it must be because in many countries, you do have to actually pay for a specialty training post or residency position. Now, if you're employed as a doctor in Australia, you get paid. This includes training roles. The salaries are pretty good, although the work can be quite long in some cases. Again, we have a salary guide or a bunch of salary guides on my website. Question, how do you enter training via the competent authority path? Well, the answer is, first of all, like any other IMG, you will need to get your credentials reviewed by the Australian Medical Council and then gain an appropriate job offer, which permits you to have provisional registration with the Medical Board of Australia. What post you're able to fill will largely depend on your current level of experience and training. If for example, you've just finished foundation years in the UK, then you'll probably only be able to apply for resident level jobs. But let's say you've almost finished your residency in anaesthetics in the US, then you'll probably be permitted to fill an unaccredited anaesthetic registrar post, but not something that you are not experienced in, such as psychiatry. Now, once you've completed your 12 months of supervision successfully, you can apply for general registration after which you can apply to enter training in Australia. You may be eligible for some recognition of prior learning. Question, how do you enter training via the standard pathway? Well, the answer is you again must register with the Australian Medical Council and complete your AMC certificate, part one and two, as well as obtain a post that allows you to work towards general registration. It's at this point that you can start applying for training posts. Question, is there some recognition for prior learning? Well, in the past, it has been difficult to obtain much in the way of recognition of prior learning or RPL from colleges. But recently, I was successful in helping one trainee doctor get almost three years credit for psychiatry. Generally, you might expect to get one or two years off your basic training. This will depend on how much training you've already done and how similar it is to training in Australia. Candidates from competent authority countries tend to do better with this particular process. Question, how are specialists from overseas treated? Well, specialists from other countries can apply directly to the relevant college for an assessment of their capability to work as a specialist in Australia. This is known as the specialist pathway, and we've got a series of videos about that.